Hi everyone, I'm State Park Interpreter Jean Ryan at the Antelope Valley California Poppy Reserve. And I have your featured plant of the day today, which is our namesake, the California poppy. Now before I talk more about the poppy, I do want to clear up some myths that I hear all the time about poppies. The main one that I hear almost every day is that picking poppies or stepping on them will get you fined or send you to jail. Now here in the reserve, yes, that's true. You can get fined for picking or destroying the poppies and you can't even go to jail if you do some you know, major destruction. But that applies to all natural and cultural features in the park. Poppies don't have special protection as our state, par our state flower, but in the park, all flowers um, are protected and all the cultural features as well, um, geologic features. You can't take home all the pretty rocks or we won't have any pretty rocks left. Um, collecting Indian artifacts is actually a federal crime. So if you find Indian artifacts, you definitely want to leave. You can look at them and then leave them where you found them. But the outside of the reserve, um, if you go to um, some of the lands that are covered with poppies out here, um, they're not protected on because they're not state lands, but that's private property. So you're actually trespassing and destroying somebody else's private property. So um, it's not that the poppies are protected, but there's other crimes that are taking place with that. So, um, but another myth that we have about, that I hear all the time about poppies, is that these are opium poppies. Now, opium poppies are a, a distant relative of California poppies, and they do have a, just a tiny bit of painkiller properties. The Indians would actually use the, um, the leaves, they'd chew up the leaves and put them into, uh, like if they had a toothache, they could put it into the cavity as a very mild, mild painkiller, but that's pretty much the extent of it. So I'm um, just gonna clear up those two myths that we have here about our poppies but another myth a historical myth that's kind of pretty funny um, when the Spanish settlers were first coming here they thought that if they took the petals of the poppy and and stewed them up in some some suet put them you know simmered them over a fire they could rub it on a balding head and that would cure their baldness so clearly that was not a cure so um, I'm sure they had to find out that out though but the hard way and Maybe there was a few bald people with orange all over their heads for a while. So uh, those are three um, of our myths that I, that I wanted to clear up. So um, let's talk more about the poppies themselves. Um, they're actually found outside of California from Oregon all the way down into Mexico and maybe a little bit in Nevada. So they're not just California, but they're, they're from, they are California area poppies. And they do actually grow in other parts of the world, but they're even maybe invasive in some places. They're non-native and in some places they are invasive, our California poppies, because they don't belong in those other countries. So, um, but yeah, they generally bloom from uh, starting around February and um, some years we can have our first poppy in January or maybe not even until March, depending on the rains that we get over the, over the winter. And it's not the amount of precipitation that we get, the, the, the rainfall level, it's the timing of it. We need to have those rains in like October or November so those poppies can start sprouting, get their roots into the ground, and then by the time it warms up, then they've established their root system and they can tolerate our, our California drought conditions as, as things warm up. But it's also, they have to have the rain coming in increments where it's enough moisture to keep them alive, but also keep them, uh, you know, let the soil drain as well in between. So it's the timing of the precipitation as well as how much. So um, last year we actually had a surprise. We had California poppies blooming until July. And I've been here for 14 years and we've never, I've never seen poppies blooming still in July. It really wasn't that impressive though. It's not like it was a field of poppies until July. Everything else was dead. So it was just kind of some orange flowers in a field of brown. So it wasn't really that impressive, but they were still blooming in July. So that was, that was a pretty unique situation. Um, the factors involved with, with the bloom, they change every year. Um, this park was created here in the western end of the Antelope Valley because a study found in 1977 this was the most consistent poppy bearing land in California. Some years we have lots of poppies, some years it's just not the right conditions and either we have other things that are that are dominant or we just don't really have very many flowers at all. And then other years when we don't expect a good bloom, 
we get surprised with a bloom. So we're not even sure what all the factors are, but if there's going to be a really great bloom, the best chance of it happening is here in the reserve. Now, over the course of the season, the bloom kind of migrates. It's not all covered with carpet. Sometimes we get that, that's a super bloom. But generally it starts on the south facing slopes where they get that early, um, that early sun in the season. And then as the season progresses, progresses, these poppies will start to fade as the flat areas will start to bloom. And then as the season continues to warm up, the north sides will start to bloom where the sun is just kind of getting up over and, and reaching onto those, those uh, north facing slopes. So the bloom itself progresses over the season. Um, and we have noticed a change in our peak though. It, historically our peak season, our peak, peak bloom was mid-April, but there has been a noticeable shift in our, in our, in our peak to around um, late March maybe early early April, but usually by early April, it's already starting to fade. So, um, you know, that is an average, but the average has, has definitely made a, uh, a marked change towards earlier in the season. Um, now we have two, we have, uh, we have annual poppies here, mostly at the reserve. Annual poppies are found mostly in desert areas. If you go up into the mountains, you'll find perennial poppies. Perennial poppies are like bush poppies. They're a large plant. Um, that one plant will have a lot of flowers on it. Our annual poppies here, um, you'll have a lot of smaller plants together that make that really big carpet effect. But here at the poppy reserve, we're kind of in a transitional habitat. So we have both kinds here, annual and perennial. So if you look around the reserve, most of it's going to be annual, but um, in some places you'll have a nice bush poppy that is bigger than the others and has lots of flowers on it. So um, now most of our poppies are, are orange. Let's look at the flowers here first. So we have, of course, our flowers. We have some beautiful flowers right here. Um, the sta different stages of them, poppies actually start off like this. Here's a good one right here. So these are buds, these are buds of a California poppy. Now California poppies are unique in that they have this cover over the flower as it is developing. And when the flower is ready to develop, the calyx, which is this little cover on it, it's like a little hat, it will release from the bottom. Right over here, we have one that is fully developed and the calyx is ready to come off. So we're gonna, we're gonna give birth to a new baby poppy here at the reserve. I'm just gonna grab the very tip and pull it off. And we have a new poppy and here's the calyx. It's just a really thin, um, thin piece of, of plant that comes off and blows away with the wind. So our little poppy here will start to unfurl as the day goes on. Looks like this is one that must have just opened up. Now right here, we see a, um, we see a, a we see a, a seed pot that's starting to develop. Now, Something that's unique to the genus, Estrolzia, which is what the, our California poppies are, they have this pink ring around the base of the flower. So after the petals fall off, let's see if we can, we can kind of see one underneath here too. But after the petals fell, fall off, you can see these pink rings here for Estrolzias and the beginning of a seed pod. And this is a, uh, a well-developed seed pod, still not ready to open up yet. But in this seed pod, there'll be as many as 200 seeds. So that's another reason not to pick our flowers because each one of those poppies could be throwing 200 seeds into the seed bed. Now, when this dries out, it'll split open and a whole bunch of poppy seeds will, will go flying out into the, pop, into the area around it for new, new baby poppy plants to, um, to start growing. But that's not where it gets the name poppies. It's not because of seed pod, pod, pod um, popping, it's because the family is Papaveraceae, the poppy family. That includes all the poppies all around the world. So Papa is Latin for milk, and it was named after the milky, milky latex of the opium poppy. So that's where the family names come, come, comes from. So Papaveraceae poppy. So that's where we get the name poppy. Um, now poppies are, are not just orange. Um, there's, there's some people have found, found occasionally a yellow poppy or even a white poppy. And that's because they're two different colors. They're actually yellow with orange on top. So you get this really brilliant orange color. 
Now, sometimes there's, you know, something happens with the genetics. Maybe um, the, the gene for the color was not uh, correctly developed, or maybe the gene for the expression of that color, you know, the, color, the gene for the color is there, there, but it was never told to express itself to like show that color. So sometimes we'll get yellow poppies. Those are yellow poppies, which did, they're, they're orange, but the, they would have been orange, but the orange gene um, didn't happen for one reason or another. So only the yellow is showing. Now over here is uh, a very unique form of that coloration. Right here, we have a very light orange poppy. I'm pretty sure what happened with this one is it doesn't have the yellow coloring under it. So it's just the orange that's, um, that's showing without that vibrant yellow underneath. Now, as the season progresses, we will have more poppies that are becoming yellow around the edges. And I don't see any yet. As the poppy plant ages, the color starts, the orange color starts to fade towards the center and you just get yellow, more and more yellow on the flowers that are coming out. And that's just what happens as the plant is aging during the season. So by the end of the season, like when we had those poppies blooming in July, all the poppies coming out were small and very yellow. They're not a different kind of poppy. They are uh, just what happens over the season. So let's see, what else to tell you about poppies? Um, Oh, something else that's important to know. Um, the poppies close up at night. Um, we get a lot of people who come out here in the evening and want to get an, an epic picture of brilliant orange poppies with a gorgeous desert sunset. And they're disappointed to find out that around 4 or 4.30, they actually curl up and go to sleep. Um, one, of the, one of the Spanish names for them, uh, the main Spanish name is um, Amapola, but the other, another Spanish name is Dormidera, or um, sleepy one, because they would they curl up. Um, but they also don't open up in the morning until about 55 degrees. So if it's cold in the morning, don't come out. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a bunch of curled up poppies. So, um, so yeah, they're, they're kind of finicky that way. Um, I think that they stay curled up because if it's too cold for their pollinators to come out, then there's no use in being open and just being whipped around by those desert, desert winds. So they, they curl up for, for, to protect themselves until their pollinators can come out. Um, let's see, another thing to tell you about is the pollinators. We don't get a lot of bees in the fields of poppy here. Um, it's because poppies don't actually have a lot of um, nectar in it. So we don't get a lot of bees on the poppies. But if you come over here, oh, we just left. We had a beetle. Oh wait, here's one. Here's a little beetle on the poppies. The beetles eat the nectar. I'm sorry, they eat the, they eat the pollen. And when they're eating the pollen, they're also inadvertently transferring the pollen between different plants. So we can see some of the pollen on the petal here. There's a beetle, he's got some pollen on him. He's eating some, flying to another flower, and that helps to pollinate the, 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 the other poppies. They're also, and here's another one with a beetle on it. There's a little beetle right there. Now I actually might be eating some of the, the poppy too. We have um, beetles that eat the poppy flowers too. But you know, it all helps to, uh, to pollinate the different flowers. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I think that is all the, uh, the things that people ask me about with uh, regarding poppies. So I hope you have learned a lot today about our California poppies. Um, I will be doing featured plant of the day videos about other relatives of poppies we have here like cream cups and uh, gold cups um, but in the meantime if you are out enjoying the poppies please remember to maintain social distance i'm uh, very thankful to my sons joshua and elijah who are doing my my filming today so we are not exposing you know any other staff and we are following um, sterilization practices too to reduce the the chance of transmission um, if you are out in the poppies though please remember don't step on them um, when you go off of off of the trails or 
out into the flowers, you step on a, a plant, it kills the plant. You may not notice the damage immediately, but the next day, you know, by a week later, there's a trail where you had walked. And if people keep walking on that trail over and over again, it compacts the soil. And the next year, the roots can't get back in to, to start growing more plants. So we end up with a scar, sometimes for several years. Um, so I think that's about all I have to tell you about. Stay, stay in touch. Please um, subscribe to our page. We'll be doing more featured plants of the day from the Antelope Valley California Poppy Reserve. Thank you. Bye-bye.